This is the first assignment of the second trimester. So sketching polynomials from zeros and their multiplicities. And there's my little 10 minute advertisement again. You will need uh, this page of notes. So you always see that in the reference material. And this page of notes is great for helping you figure out um, from the highest power and whether it's an odd or even degree um, and then the, what the leading coefficient analysis whether you have the end behaviors and also when sketching um, the graph how to make the graph behave correctly even multiplicities make the graph bounce back in the direction it was coming and then odd it will cut through and then the greater the multiplicity even or odd the flatter the graph becomes as it bounces off or cuts through so that i will try my very best to highlight as we go now the whole standard form business i'm not going to make you spend lots and lots of time you know multiplying that's something we've done already so you should practice it a couple of times in other words x plus one x plus two times x minus one times x minus one foil that out you know foil the first two then take that answer times the third one we're going to do it on a, a problem or two on the quiz make sure you know it but i don't want to get into spending the time um, on how to expand that's something we've covered already so this is an odd degree of three Meaning that if we did expand it out, since this is a 2 here, we're just adding these exponents. Okay, leading coefficient will be 1 and positive. How did I figure that out? It's 1 times 1 squared. And if I do this enough, you'll see, because it's when I write these three things out here, the leading coefficient is... You know, when I do x times x times x, that's 1x to the third. That value on the highest power, that coefficient of the highest power is the leading coefficient. But you can just do it by taking the coefficient on x to the power that you see outside the parentheses there. And you'll have it. Y-intercept is going to be positive 2. How did I get that? 2 times negative 1 times negative 1. So it's the end. This is like the front product of coefficients. This is the last product of all the coefficients. So left end behavior is going to be negative infinity. Okay, how did I get that? Because we have an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient. There it is. So negative infinity, positive infinity. So you're just figuring out which one of those four boxes are you landing in. Okay, so we have x plus 2. The zero is negative 2. The multiplicity is 1. I'll explain what I'm doing here in a minute. Okay, so the factor is x plus 2. If we know the zero is negative 2. Okay, we know how that works. And then the multiplicity is 1. That's the power. Okay, x minus 1 is the factor, the 0 is 1, and the multiplicity is 2. So it's the factor and the 0 is the relationship that we when, we when we factored. That's what I'm referring to there. Now we're ready to graph. So we have a y-intercept of 2. We have x-intercept of negative 2 and 1. And we have that 1, since the multiplicity is 2, it's going to bounce off. So it's going to come down like this and bounce back. That I already know. I'm just going to do it. And then it's going to come through 2 here. And you might want to, you know, look at this first before you start your sketching. So that the peak is actually going to be more right there. And that's the part that um, it's actually coming down there a little bit that you know using your calculator and looking at uh, the uh, graph would help I'll allow you to do that a little bit 
I can't get that. That's because that one is no good. Um, I'll allow you to do that just so you can get an idea of the graph and how it works. So it's much flatter like that. Um, just enter it in a y equals and check it out. And check your, you know, the nature of it. We're not going to care about these peaks and valleys. We're just going to care that we use this information to adequately graph the function. So your assignment is the evens, and I am going to do the odds. Problem three. Again, standard form, I'm not real concerned about it. I don't even give it on my, uh, um, my answer keys. So just know how to multiply one out. You're going to have a couple to do on the exam, or on the quiz, excuse me. So this is odd. It is three. This is negative. It's negative one. So you think of negative one times one times one, because this is twice, times one. And then the power is 3 because I've got a 2 and a 1. So it's the, the degree is the sum of the exponents or the multiplicities. They're all the same. Kind of, the degree is the sum of the multiplicities. Y-intercept is 4. How do I know this? Because it's 2 times 2 times negative 1, and I can't forget the negative 1 in front. So that negative 1 would get distributed through everything once you're done expanding. So that has to get run through there. You're welcome to put this in and look at it from a table perspective. So we have odd negative, odd negative, this is your end behavior. So I'm talking about you're welcome to go into your y equals and put this in and just check it out so you know times x minus one. Okay, so that's about what it's going to look like. But you also need to, you know, have for sure. Um, okay, that's a two. Double check everything. Always. Sorry about that. Okay, and that's what it's going to look like. And that's really going to help you as you go to sketch these. So the zero, um, we have a factor of x plus two, so that's a negative two, multiplicity is two. Remember, that's the exponent, x minus one, one, and one. So the multiplicity is the exponent up here. And we're gonna take all of that, so we know at negative two, it's gonna bounce off, and I always trying to eye that first. And then one, it's gonna cut through. So the end behavior, what's all that about? It is where the ends of your graph end up going towards. So off to the right, I'm going towards negative infinity. And off to the left, I'm going towards positive infinity, whether they're going up or down is the idea. That is problem three. Up to problem five. And these will slowly get more advanced as you do them. So notice now we've got a power of 5. So still an odd degree. And then positive leading coefficient of 1. How did I get that? 1 times 1 squared times 1 squared. It's not always going to be 1. Uh, negative 75 here. How did I get that? Negative 3 times 5 squared times negative 1 squared. So it's that last number to the power. If you were multiplying it all out, that's what would happen. So odd positive means this for the end behavior. And so x plus 5 has a 0 of negative 5. Happens twice. And then x minus 1 happens twice, but whoops, the zero is one, it happens twice, and then x minus three, the zero is three, it happens once. So what does that look like 
now with the graph. So I have a zero at negative five and it is a double root. So it's gonna just hit. So way down here at negative 75, the graph is gonna come way down here and then up to one. So this is really steep to this and all you can really do is do your best with this and then it's going to bounce back down and come back up through three and see that even I'm struggling a little bit here with getting all of this so um, make sure you have labeled everything this is negative 75 so sometimes that y-intercept is not nice and you just have to go with sketching it. This is to learn about, you know, in general, how polynomials behave. It's to skill practice with polynomials. And so you don't have to be exact um, on your graph sketching, but the nature of it has to be right. So you have to uh, get that right. So number seven is the next one. Now I know you look at this and go, oh no, it's in standard form. Well, use a zero finder. So I'm going to use my zero finder to do this. And this is five as the highest one. So one, three, negative two, negative six, one, and three. In the online one, if you just typed all that in, it would literally do it for you. Probably faster than this one's working here. So we have negative three. Let me go back to my mode here. I'm going to do real. Oh, it won't do it. Okay, darn it. Sorry about that. I thought it would eliminate the, what that looked to be like. So actually the online one might be better than this. You could also graph it and look at the table and that might actually be a better approach. So the zeros are negative three, negative one twice. You see a little bit of arrow there, and error there and one twice. So actually let's graph it. You, you can always, you know, do that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, you need to know how to look at the table correctly and not forget things that I've taught you in the past. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, I forgot that. I had to do an arrow like that. Don't forget to come out of the exponent position. 2x to the third, come out of the exponent position. Minus 6x squared, come out of the exponent position plus x plus 3. So if you go to your table, immediately you'll see we have zeros at negative 1, 1, and negative 3. That's uh, very important. It doesn't give you their multiplicities, so the zero finder gave you their multiplicities. So I'm going to put this down. Um, the zero finder gave you, you saw them appear twice, so that's huge. You could also look at the graph and it would tell you, so at negative three, it's one, and then you see them bounce back twice in that same direction. So that's the giveaway. Um, and then that can that will tell you how to do this. This is x plus one, x minus one. The power is two, x minus one, the power is two. So that will tell you how to write the factor form the equation. So we have an odd degree of five. We have positive leading coefficient of one. So one times one squared times one squared. The y-intercept is three. So that's three times one squared times negative one squared. This was one times one squared times negative one squared. You're doing it all out. Uh, left end behavior. So you look up on that sheet of notes, odd positive, and that tells you negative infinity, positive infinity. And then you're ready to go. Okay, so one and then three up here. And then, then I know at negative one, it bounces back. And then at, neg and at one, it bounces back. 
So it's this whole thing about how the graph behaves that you need to, you know, look and read this again. Even multiplicities, they're usually two. It bounces off and returns the way it came. Odd cuts through and it gets flatter. We're going to do ones where it gets flatter um, the higher the multiplicity. That's number seven. Number nine. Oh. We have the graph. So the first thing you do with the graph is you write the zeros in. And then the, the factor above it. So negative 2 is x plus 2. And 1 is x minus 1. And then the multiplicities. 1, 1, and 2. Now how do we know 1, 1, and 2 instead of what it could it be 3, 3, and 4? Um, we know it's not 3, 3, and 4 because it's not flattening out. So at 1, if it was 4, you would see it get real flat around 1. It just would be flatter here. And here you would see the graph come through. You'll, you'll see as you do, you'll do some of these. <clears throat> there will be some where you see a flattened curve as it cuts through or um, if it's this um, a double root. But that's how we know it's not, okay, because it's just sharply bouncing here and sharply cutting through. So we have, there are exponents, there are factors, and we're ready to write this. And I will say we still don't know 100% for sure. But you can check the x or the y-intercept by doing 3 times 2 times negative 1 squared, and that will give you 6. So that does work out. So this is an even, because it's 4, and positive, meaning that these are both. So it all has to come together in the end. You can't have something off. It all has to come together. Um, leading coefficient is 1 here. So that's 1 times 1 times 1 squared. Every little piece of information has to work with this. If there's something that's off a little bit, um, you didn't do something right. Okay, so that's the last one. You have the evens to do. I did not do um, one with a flattened. Um, I don't think there's one on the assignment. Just let me look through here real quick. Um, Answer key wise, I'm not seeing one, uh, but there will be uh, there will be occasion occasions when you have a cube root, and it'll cut through in a flat. We don't have any on this side, but it'll cut through in a more flat manner. I think I don't give you any with multiplicity over three, so you just need to be aware of the cube root and that it would cut through. Um, it would come it would cut through so that it's flattened more like this or possibly like this it just would flatten itself out around um, the x-intercept all right so enough of that that's your first assignment uh, in the first quiz of the second try